tell me a little bit about what you've been doing over the last year or two. Sure. I know you've had some moments of reflection and right. you've yeah. represented the state for so long. Yeah. It, you know, one of the neat things when you travel throughout the state of North Carolina is mm -hmm. you meet so many passionate people, so many people who and should be concerned about the direction of our country, the direction of our state. Right. One of the things that we did coming out of the primary, uh, I guess about a year ago, is to see the need that we needed to flip our courts. So we mm -hmm. get out there and and uh, started a website, Win the Courts, and was really enjoyed traveling and trying to tell people and talk to people why these courts matter. And we're seeing even recently exactly why these courts matter. We had such a great slate of these six judicial candidates. Mm -hmm. We also started a uh, group called Advancing Hope. It, it was just to get out there and to talk about the issues that are important to us uh, from a business perspective, from an mm -hmm. educational perspective primarily. And in fact, just recently, I had a chance to be over at North Carolina A&T, okay. good friends with Chancellor Harold Martin there and talking with sure. a class of, of entrepreneurs about what it is that you can look for. What about business and economic security that we need to be talking about here in North Carolina? Sure, sure. So when mm -hmm. you say talk about advancing hope, what are people yeah. telling you are important to them? For the direction of the state? Well, I think very much important is you're mm -hmm. seeing specifically, not just in the larger cities, a lot of people are concerned about the public safety aspect as right. far as uh, we have a governor and attorney general that's been very soft on crime. Uh, and look, you're talking with somebody who believes that everybody should have a fair chance in our judicial system, mm -hmm. yet at the same time, when you're taking more of a Gavin Newsom approach on crime, uh, it really puts people in a, in a vicarious situation. And, and, and really, it even stymies business. If you look, if you look at our state right now, we're behind only Florida and Texas for when it comes to the total amount of people relocating to our state. Right. They want to relocate their families to a place where, where it is pro-business, but also where we're paying attention to the crime in some of the places like Durham and Raleigh and Charlotte as well. And you know that's something we were talking about yeah. earlier is uh, you know education and mm -hmm. how important. Yes. You you said this is the you know we're we're treating the symptoms past yes. that. Tell yeah. me a little bit more about what you're hearing. What we're hearing and what we've seen. You know I had a chance to serve in Congress on the mm -hmm. education labor or education and workforce. Sometimes they change the name depending on who's in charge. Sure. But one of the things that I have discovered as well as in talking with people is all these other issues are very important and we've got to engage and we've got to be willing to fight hard. Uh, we fight differently sometimes, but we still have to fight and engage. But to me, the very source, the very foundation of what we've got to work on is we've got to root out the indoctrination that's been happening in our education generation uh, for really more than a generation, for mm -hmm. probably five or six decades now. And what I mean by that is when I worked on the DC Opportunity Scholarship Program, which was basically allowing parents to have the choice to put their children where they believed, mm -hmm. uh, instead of even taking the five minutes that you get as a member of Congress, we would bring in families. We would let moms talk about how being able to choose the school what, it, what was really changing the, the direction for their entire family's future. I mean, it's very powerful testimony, but I think we're at a place where we now even take it one step further. We saw Governor Doug Ducey do this in Arizona. Kim Reynolds is about to put this together in Iowa, where the actual dollars are following the child. Uh, the, the, the competition that creates, but also to allow a family to maybe pursue a charter school, or maybe even a private or a Christian school, that right. their child, we want to talk about equal opportunities, can have the same opportunities as others because they're not stuck in a district or a place where the school is not providing the resources or the education that that child needs. Sure, so when you say mm -hmm. the dollars following mm -hmm. the child, I don't know if people understand how schools are funded sure. in North Carolina. Yeah. Explain a little bit about what you mean. Yeah, well, think about this. Uh, if you look at our overall budget in mm -hmm. North Carolina, which is gonna be close to $28 billion, right. people forget sometimes that 41% of that budget goes to education. We hear a lot of people, we need this, we need for more funding. So so as far as the overall dollars, that's, that's a pretty healthy the amount. You're talking 12 to 13 million dollars there. What, where we've missed the mark over the last few years, and I think where some of these states are now understanding, is that when you're when you're funding the way that we have where you're just you're just sending money to as a bulk and you're not defining or measuring or having any metrics as far as the the way that the child is progressing or learning, we have realized that that's problematic. So when we talk about the dollars following the child, mm -hmm. that that family would then have those dollars uh, as a tax credit to be able to utilize and spend on the child's education in the way that they see fit. Sure. I authored a bill called the A-plus Act uh, in, in uh, D.C. It did not pass. I think we got 191 votes of the 218 that we needed. But basically it said this, is that the bureaucracies of the federal government and even some state 
would no longer have any say so in how that parent wanted their child educated. Okay. It wouldn't strip away a dollar of the funding, mm -hmm. but it would reallocate it to allowing the parents to have more say so at even your local school boards. So you're, as you're traveling around, you're talking to parents, talking sure. to families, but yeah. also business owners and business right. leaders. Um, we've got a great economy here in North Carolina. Things yes. are moving quickly. Uh, what are they telling you about what they see coming down the road, what we might need to look toward yeah. in the future? I think there's some concern. Uh, right now, and in, in our state legislatures deserve some props for making North Carolina the number one business climate in the country. There are concerns as far as uh, looking two years out from now. I, I know uh, there's one announced candidate, uh, Mr. Josh Stein, not to try to be too partisan today, sure. but there are some concerns that his approach to business as a whole would be more Gavin Newsom-like. Okay. Uh, so that is one of the concerns that I'm hearing. They want to continue to make sure that the investments are made and, and you do have some that take the position where no incentives, no, nothing. And I think we have to be careful going to that extreme because if you look at a place, for example, uh, the Spartanburg Greenville area of South Carolina with BMW, right. the amount of revenue and what that has done for that part of the state is, has created really generational wealth. So we want to make sure we want to be smart. And that's really what a lot of these guys are talking about. We're in the middle right now of a seven city business roundtable tour. We've been in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Winston-Salem will be in Raleigh and Greensboro and some other cities as well. That's a lot of what we're hearing about. And a lot of these guys come from a pro-business conservative perspective, mm -hmm. but they also want to make sure that, that, that North Carolina stays business friendly as we look to the future. Sure, absolutely. Um, what else are you hearing as you're on the road and doing this? You're, you're a father too, and sure. we're all looking uh, about looking toward the future for the next generation of North Carolinians. People are very concerned mm -hmm. uh, with where this country is headed. In fact, that, that's not just right. for conservatives. If you look at the majority of Americans sure. under this Joe Biden administration, and we're seeing this, this progressive wing become louder and louder. And one of the things, uh, Donna, that I saw even six years in serving from 2015 to 2021 in the U.S. House, in those six years I saw a shift where a lot of the leftist operations has always been you know, under the table or behind the scenes because the American people wouldn't accept it as a whole. What I have seen shift, it's now more of an in your face, dare you to stop us mm -hmm. because of the amount of the ideology and the woke culture that we've seen in corporations, speaking of business, sure. uh, and, and education, the political arena, arts and entertainment, everywhere you turn has this message that not only do we stand for a different set of ideals, but we're going to put it in your face and dare you to respond or put something back towards it. Mm -hmm. That's a huge concern beyond uh, even some of the issues that we're talking about even in, in, before we, we just get to this topic. One of the things that we're seeing out here is a growing concern about children, as you mentioned, and grandchildren, is what kind of country, what kind of state are we leaving? Are we, are we creating a place where they can still get out and talk about the principles, uh, uh, family values, the things that Republicans used to talk about a great deal? Uh, I'm one that thinks this, um, this is my track record, is a strong conservative, but I'm driven. One of the reasons we've stayed in the political arena is I'm driven to make sure all of our communities hear about individualism, right. hear about these conservative ideals, because we believe that this is really the foundation of America. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna to continue to be this prosperous, most generous philanthropic nation that's ever existed, mm -hmm. those core principles have to maintain and they have to be protected. Sure. Well, thank you. I appreciate sure. your time so much sitting down with us and, and visiting us here. We look forward to doing it again sometime. All thank right. you so much. Thank you.